Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another Fountain Pen Resurrection Sunday video. One of the really cool things about searching for a vintage fountain pen is sometimes you stumble on a real treasure. A pen that looks like it should be thrown out, or perhaps has already been thrown out as garbage. And when you get it home, you give it a bath and a scrub and a polish, and it turns out it is a diamond in the rough. That is the case with this Schaefer black hard rubber lever filler from the 1920s. I don't even have a model name or a number for it as I can't find anything like it online. I was perusing a local antique consignment shop and I saw a woman putting some items into some cases in her little nook of the shop. I noticed there were two really horrible looking old black pens in the case. I asked her if I could see them and she handed them both over to me. They were both marked $20. One was a Waterman and the other one was this Schaefer. They were both in awful shape, but I could see they were both 14 karat gold nibs, so I snatched them up. For 20 bucks, at least I'd get some fun out of trying to restore them, even if they ended up being lost causes. The fun began when I got them home and I started to get through some of the 100 years of dried ink and grime. Watch as I bring this old beauty back to life right now. <laughs> Today's fountain pen resurrection is a Schaefer lever filled fountain pen made from black hard rubber from the 1920s. And what I'd like to do today is talk a bit about the history of this pen, show some before restoration photos, talk about the restoration process, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing example. I would call this Schaefer a flat top, but it has conical finials. I can't find anything similar to it in any of my now two month long search. Most fountain pens pre-1929 uh, and the introduction of Schaefer's celluloid balance pen were cylindrical flat tops made of hard rubber. Black hard rubber was known under a few trade names including ebonite and vulcanite. It's basically vulcanized rubber. Modern ebonite is made of synthetic rather than natural rubber. Even though I can't find this particular conical finial model anywhere online, I can roughly estimate that this pen was made in Canada and dates from between 1925 and 1930. The humped Schaefer clip began around 1925 and by 1930 Schaefer's celluloid pens were beginning to take over. That being said, Schaefer continued to make black hard rubber pens into the 1930s so this pen could be as young as 1935. Here is what this pen looked like when I found it at a local antique shop. The nib was dull and only the engraved 14K there gave any indication this might be gold. But the results you see now are what you can discover when you just give a pen a good cleaning. I assumed a lot of the discoloring and milky white appearance of the black hard rubber was from moisture or something like tape applied to the surface for a very long time. Therefore, I only soaked the nib, feed, and section in some water for a few minutes at a time and then tried to wiggle the section out of the barrel. After a few attempts and luckily no need for applying heat, uh, the section came free. After running plenty of soapy water through the pen over and over again uh, until it ran clear, uh, and then rinsing it thoroughly with distilled water, I let the pen stand nib down in some tissue overnight to wick out any remaining water. Then I removed the section and sack from the pen and used my polishing compound on the barrel and the cap. I avoided the clip and put a strip of masking tape around the cap band. And I avoid getting any polishing compound or rubbing on that gold plated lever. The difference between the finish as I found it and what I was able to get after polishing is like night and day. As for the nib, I never attempted to remove the nib and feed from the pen. The sack looked and felt healthy, so I didn't want to remove it if the pen would write and flow well. I simply polished the gold nib with my jeweler's cloth until it came up bright and shiny as brand new. I used the polish cloth on the ebonite feed to get it shining uh, nice and bright as well. Now let's look at the pen. It's a small pen. The overall cap length is only 122 millimeters. Here it is next to the ubiquitous Pilot Metro and you can see just how small this pen is. 
It is almost identical in length to my Pilot E95S, posted as well. From the top we see a conical finial, which I find very unusual because I can't find a single instance of another Schaefer pen from this era with conical finials like this. The rest of the cap is cylindrical, uh, so it's straight to this single gold-plated cap band. The gold-filled clip is an example of the Schaefer humped clip from around 1925 and says made by Schaefer's. Most clips of the period simply say Schaefer's but it seems everything made by Schaefer's in Canada said either made by Schaefer's or made by Schaefer's Canada. The clip is in remarkably good shape. There is some pitting on it but it really looks good and works well. And there are two breather holes on either side of the cap. The barrel is a straight cylinder as well, typical of the pens of the 1920s and earlier. The filler lever is gold plated and recessed into the body. The conical end finial matches the top. The cap unscrews with almost one full turn to reveal a very small black hard rubber section with a flare towards the number five size 14 karat gold nib. The ebonite feed is a good example of the wide spaced comb feed uh, used in the 1920s. Let's get a closer look at this gorgeous nib. It says made by Schaefer's Canada and 14K. There are no serial numbers and no heart shaped breather hole. Things just seem to be different in Canada for some reason. This pen would have been made in the Schaefer's plant in Toronto, Ontario. Because the section isn't shellacked in place, I can remove it to show you how the lever filler works. As I look down the barrel and you can see the J bar in there. There's the bottom of the J and the lever pushes on the bar and the bar presses against the sack. And when you let go of the lever, the sack inflates and sucks up ink. Unposted, the pen is too short for me, but posted, it becomes very nicely balanced in the hand. And it's very light at only 14.3 grams. My Pilot E95S is one gram heavier. And I found that even though it's got a tiny section, when it's posted like this, and I balance it so that I write further up in a more classic writing grip like this, the pen is very, very comfortable and actually aids in writing with this very vintage nib as we shall soon see. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the 1920s black hard rubber Schaefer lever filler with a 1920s Waterman black hard rubber lever filler. This is how that one looked before it was restored. A 1931 Parker Duofold Jr. A 1920s wall gold filled metal number four and a 1930s Waterman Skywriter. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. These are all 14 karat gold nibs. And I don't believe that clip there on that Waterman is native to the pen. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. You can see how very short the uh, Schaefer is, even compared to the Junior Duofold. Uh, these pens were all made in Canada, with the exception of the Duofold, which was made in the USA. Now let's look at some measurements, and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper. And this is the 1920s Schaefer. I'm going to call it a BHR for black hard rubber. And it's got a 14 karat gold number five size nib. Now the first thing I wanted to see was how well this nib felt laying down ink on the paper. I was worried that it might be scratchy and misaligned, but once the ink started to flow, this folks, this right here, is a vintage writing experience. And it's a wet noodle of a nib. It's very wet, very soft. 
and very flexible. This is the vintage gold nib experience right here. No pressure whatsoever. As you can see, I'm not exerting any pressure on this nib at all. Just normal writing pressure and it's just giving a marvelous line variation experience. And the ink for this vintage pen is, of course, Waterman's Serenity Blue. The line this pen makes goes from 2 0 0.2 millimeters to 0 0.7 millimeters and that makes it a western triple XF to a medium broad or a Japanese extra fine to broad. That's a lot of line variation. And for our quote. And for some reverse writing, yeah, it's not going to do that. And these were never designed to do that. And some quick writing. As you can see, folks, this is a gusher. This is a paintbrush. So my feelings about this pen go beyond the empirical details of it. If I just looked at this pen in my hand, it's too small, too thin, the section's too short, and the nib is way too small for me. It doesn't have a great ink capacity, and I doubt I'll use it extensively as an everyday writer. But those mundane observations pale in comparison to the entire experience of finding what seems like a worthless old relic, seemingly tossed away and unusable, and with relatively little effort, bringing it back to life again and having it shine like a new diamond and perform beyond expectations. It is very much the antique lover's dream. You find something for 20 bucks and bring it home and hoping for the best, but realistically expecting you probably bought something worthless and it turns out that it's a treasure. This nib, tiny though it is, is a true vintage gold nib pen experience. You don't need to be a calligrapher to appreciate how cool your writing or printing looks when using it with no effort at all. That's right up my street. I like no effort. There's been a lot of talk about how modern pen companies cannot replicate these kinds of vintage nibs. I'm pretty sure that they do know how to do it, they just don't want to because customers wouldn't know how to use them properly and exert so much force on the nib. Sign, please. The first time it stalls on them, invariably springing the nib and then sending it back as defective or for warranty repairs. It's better to make the nibs stiffer to resist damage. Better to protect against liability, that is. That might not be the entire reason, but I'm willing to bet it's the majority of it. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens, as I'm now an affiliate of the online store, and when you shop at Goldspot using my link, you'll be supporting my channel as well, at no extra charge to you. You can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section, and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching
And that's all she wrote. I made this. 